Hey people, I'm a little late today getting onto the live. I had some lovely customers come in the door and before I knew it, there was like an extra 15 minutes gone, which was a shame, but I'm here now, a little bit later. Um, but if you have any questions you'd like to ask me, pop them up. I've got a few things I was going to talk to you about today, but it's fairly, uh, it's fairly open really um, that I'm, I've got a little bit about some cork products that I wanted to tell you about. And it's also, while it's not getting much warmer here, it's getting a little warmer and I'm anticipating it getting a bit warmer again. So I'm starting to take a, a close eye or eyeball the cotton shelf down here and thinking about knitting some lighter weight things for the summer. Um, maybe a little bit of linen in my future. Does, do any of you like um, using different yarns for summertime? Um, and sometimes it's not even a difference in the fibre that you're knitting with. I find that pulling in things that are a little bit lighter weight, like a lace weight or even things with silk and stuff are really nice because there is something about very, very chunky, heavy yarns as you start pulling them out that if the weather gets warmer, it does get a bit sticky on your hands. Um, that I'm happy to knit with 100% wool, but definitely on the lighter weight. Like lace weights are great for the summer. Um, and even the amount that's sitting on your lap. So as you're knitting through it, whatever is actually sitting on your lap is a little bit lighter weight also. Um, but what I wanted to tell you about, first of all, keep some, answer the questions as we're going through and I'll kind of share it with people as we're, as we're kind of jumping in. But I do want to tell you about a few of the little cork bits and pieces. So I don't often talk about where I'm located, which is Cork City in the south of Ireland, but there's loads of crafting and lots of little bits happening in Cork. Uh, really, really interesting. Like a few weeks ago, I was sharing with you um, the ceramics places. Um, Charlie Mahan, who's in the who's in the English market and we got the really really nice little sheep mugs that we were we shared with you for the knit along it was one of our knit along prizes and when we're doing the seasons club and the Celtic Knits Club we also try to pull in from around Ireland but also from around Cork lots of different little crafters so we had last week I've got it over here um, Mr Kite Design did these really really beautiful linen notion pouches with the nice thing about them is that this is Irish linen and they've got, let me open it up here, nicely lined and these lovely bright zips. They're a little bit wider so that it's big enough if you've got like needle tips or short double points and things like that, they're going to fit really well inside here. And Nadia made a very good point. She said that because of the bright zips, if you've got this with all of your little notions and bits tucked into your bigger project bag, you'll be able to spot those zips immediately and find it and pull it out. And I thought that was a very, very good point. It's like this little, a little guide to be able to see it. Um, and the next thing that we added during the week that I haven't really spoken about much, but anyone who's part of the Celtic Knits Club will have gotten these before. And it is Python Charms. Um, but I've gotten something very special because I was eyeing up her website and she used to have, I'm gonna open it up here now hopefully pull it out she had a um, she had on her website these of course I've dropped them now so give me a second let me pick these up she has on her website all these different charms that have got double duty because you've got the charm where it comes with a clip but then there's the circular part of which you can put on and use it as a stitch marker so if you're not using them as stitch markers you get to actually just hook them on as a charm and bracelets or a necklace or anything like that and when you need to go and use it they're all sitting right there where you need them these ones are really interesting because they're sets of semi-precious stones inside here so each bag has got a slightly different collection and there's a little qr code in there telling you about the different stones that are in there and some of them also have the option of this little bracelet where you can actually clip them all onto it so if you're wearing the bracelet and you're working through something and you need one of your charms or a stitch marker, you unclip it and you can pop it into the work. But I just, I just think these are gorgeous. They're just really cute. They're just a little wire a frame cage that goes around here. So she is also, Python Charms is also based in Cork. So that is our second Cork craft person. And anyone who's been following along for a couple of years will know of our original 
cork craft person and that was badly made books and let me pull one over here badly made books is they're not really badly made they are handmade which actually means that there's a few little quirks and a few little things that are just a little bit different but because they're handmade it means that we can get all of these really beautiful covers so he did he he's done a couple with different chart patterns in there and then inside you've got uh, you know just standard dot printing but at the back there is also a um, series of grids like not all of it but the back little section and it's specifically knitting graph paper um, you might say what's the difference and the difference for anyone who is printed out knitting graph paper is that they're the shape of a knitted stitch so a, knit, a knitted stitch is shorter than it is wider and what that means is if you've got graph paper that is shaped like that, if you draw out, you know, color work charts or even cables and things like that, it suddenly means that vertically it's more compressed. So it's going to look a lot closer to what your finished piece is. So it's a very, very good idea for if you are doing drawing up your own little, you know, images and color works that you're going to use in your knitting, because it'll give you a much more accurate end picture of what it's going to look like. Um, and Jay, you were saying you like to work with lovely summery colored cotton blends yarn for summer. Oh, yes, that's I, I'm actually I love colors for summertime. I'm drawn to kind of brighter pops of color because in winter, it must have be winter. I'm wearing black, but I wear a lot of black and gray and maybe some brighter coats or some brighter jumpers. But for summer, I am drawn to some bright colors. So I've got should really just turn the camera down here a little. This is the shelf of cotton we have down here. Um, I actually, I, this isn't quite bright, but it's kind of like a rose pink. I think that's just a very, really pretty pink color. And Laura was a bit shocked, but I was saying that the really, really bright, bright pinks, I think, what's this one called? This is just fuchsia. I actually love this, like particularly for a lacer top or um, if you have a cardigan or something like that, that you're wearing over a summer dress, something that's really bright, particularly if it's open work, I just think works really well. Um, you might remember last year as well, the tank top that I redid, um, what is it, the Wavos tank top. I did that in a kind of very bright mustardy colored and I loved it. There's Laura, she popped in, she was shocked, yes. <laughs> because I am usually in winter in my blacks and in neutrals, but there's something about really bright colors that punctuate darker colors that appeals to me so i have got a soft spot for very bright pinks don't like pastels but bright colors yeah for sure and last this was this i think this was last year um this was the petrol color and this is the one it is dusty roads where it's got the lace sleeves and the side panels in lace so that one was done in our coral yarn, the 100% cotton, and it knitted up really nicely. It's actually got a nice feel. Um, the stockinette stitch is nice and smooth and it behaved itself for the lace. So it's a good one for combinations of the two of those. So if you're thinking about summer knitting, um, coral cotton or another cotton works pretty well, I think, or just a lighter weight yarn um, for in-between projects. If you do like the look of those three little cork specials here, our three cork crafts. We've put up a cork bundle as well with a discount for the whole lot together. So go pop in and take a look at that and you can get all of your little cork craft goodies all in one spot. Um, but that, yeah, that's what we have got new in the shop. Oh, and there's a couple of new colors. We've been adding um, the Carbitho we put in with a new color and we've got a couple of new colors in Donegal Soft and Donegal Chunky. But have a hop into the website and just take a look at the pages and you'll be able to see that. Now, last week I announced and was telling you all about the short row knits class. And I want to thank all of you who've jumped in so far and have gone on uh, into the pre-sale. Um, I hope all that's up right now is there's several patterns for you to take a look at. Um, but you don't necessarily need to start right away. But then there's also just an introduction with me talking about what short rows are and give you an idea of the things you can do with them. Um, I was trying to, I, I always kind of fall over myself when I'm talking about short rows, simply because you've, you probably, if you've heard me talking about short rows, you're probably getting a bit sick of this. The fact that it is 
a very, very simple technique. You just don't finish the end of the row. You turn around and go in the other direction. And you only fall, come into problems when you're trying to hide where you turn. That's it. <laughs> and all of the, and so to me, the techniques you use are uh, less important than what you do with it because there's all these techniques and they're just a means to an end. It's what you can do with it that's actually really important and what's fun and what's interesting and is very freeing for you as a knitter too because you can take that technique and you can say oh, I really need extra space in the bus but I don't want to add in extra increases or decreases and if you know how to do short rows you can add it in if you don't want it to be too visible you can do it in a few different spots so there's only a few short rows at a time so that you don't have very dramatic um, you don't have very very dramatic darts and things like that it's also the notebook i was talking to you about where i was talking about knitting graph paper you can also just look up online and find knitting graph paper and that is your friend with short rows if you're putting them into a pattern that doesn't have it already because you can draw it out you can draw the shape that you want and once you draw out the shape you can then just put the little stair steps in as to where you'd like the short rows and it'll give you a feel for okay if i do steps every maybe three stitches first and then every two and then every one that's going to give me the curve that I want so it gives you a very very good way of controlling what it's going to look like before you even knit it or you actually knit it on the needles it's a bit like knitting it on paper first of all because you get to see what it's going to look like and you can go into it with a lot more confidence as you start the knitting um, you haven't gotten the short row class yet but you can't wait to join excellent uh, please do jump in. It will be a lot of fun. Um, I try to kind of tamp down my enthusiasm a little bit because I get very gushy when it comes to short rows. It's a bit sad really, but there you have it. I'm a, I am very much a short row enthusiast because anything that can, allows you to control your knitting while keeping it very simple, in my mind, is a really good thing. So I will leave you with that today, I think. Thinking and mulling over short rows and I suppose dreaming up what you can do with them. What would you like to do with short rows? Where would you like to add a little bit of extra length in your knitting? Where would it be useful? Um, what's, what's been annoying you about your knitting that you wish it could be changed and could short rows do that? Because in all likelihood, there's a lot of situations that you may never have thought about using it that it could be a perfect solution for you. So go, uh, go jump into short rows today, everyone. Bye. Thank you.